Hello folks, today's video is about how to draft a complete specification and this is with specific reference to the patent agent examination. So if you would have seen my previous video, I had talked about how to draft claims for the patent agent examination. There is compulsory question uh, pertaining to drafting of uh, claims and also there is another compulsory question which requires you to draft a complete specification. So today I will be dealing with how can you draft a complete specification so as to answer the question that is asked in the patent agent examination. So very briefly, I will take you through what are the parts of the complete specification which you need to take care of while answering that question. The first important part of the complete specification is the title of the invention which indicates what the invention actually is and the title may go up to around 15 words. What you need to take care of is that the title should indicate what the invention is relating to and most of the aspects of the title and other fields you can always get from the, the description given in the question. You can derive most of these uh, aspects or most of these parts as I will be showing to you when I take a live example. Then next field is the field of invention. So this indicates uh, what is the technology field to which the invention relates. So suppose your invention relates to a communication device used in a wireless network and you are providing a communication device that is used for providing secure communication. So you can always say that the field of invention is uh, that the invention relates to a communication device for a wireless network. Or maybe you have made a composition for a hair color that stays on for long periods. You can always say that the field of invention is composition of a hair color. So this is how you indicate what is the technology area to which the invention relates. The next important aspect of a complete specification is the background of the invention. So this is the portion where you build up a background behind why the invention was required. So here you will, you will explain is what is the existing state of the art or what is the ex existing technology or knowledge that was there in the related field. So like if you are talking about a communication device for providing secure communication. So you indicate what is the existing communication device in the market or what is there already known regarding communication devices and what are the drawbacks in that communication device and how you built upon that so as to make your invention. So background would define what is the need for your invention. Why did you make that invention? Once you have identified what is already existing, you explain what is the problem in that existing state of the art. So for example, if your invention relates to a hair color, then you can always say that there is a need for a hair color that stays for long periods. So maybe in the uh, state of the art, you don't find any hair color which would stay on for long periods. So there is a need that uh, subsists which requires uh, you to have a hair color that would stay on for long periods and that is the need for your invention. On similar lines for the communication device example you can always say that there is a need for a communication device which ensures secure communication. So you couldn't find any communication device in the state of the art which provides for secure communication. So the next important feature of a complete specification is brief description of drawings. So this is where you dis briefly describe what your various drawings in the specification relate to well, I am taking the, the example I had taken of a communication device. So maybe the figure 1 depicts a block diagram of a communication device and figure 2 may be depicting a flow chart of a method that is implemented in that communication device. Then comes the most important part of a complete specification which is the detailed description of invention. So here you define what the invention is and when I say that you have to define your invention in a detailed manner. So you have to show what are the different steps or what are the different features that make the invention and how those features are connected to each other or maybe interacting with each other or what are the different steps that are being carried out for enabling those features to work together so as to help the invention achieve the intended goal. So if you remember I talked about what is the need for the invention in the background section. So now you will, you will try to satisfy that uh, requirement by explaining how these features are satisfying that particular need. And finally you come to the claims. The claims form the most important part of the complete specification because it defines what is the scope of protection that would be made available to you and you claim what is the unique aspect that you are trying to protect. So it defines what are the essential and unique features, how those features are interconnected to each other and how these features are working together so as to help the invention achieve the intended goal. So you explain that in the detailed description and now in a way you briefly point that out in the claims and also you take a note of is there any additional information available such as different materials that may be used for the features or maybe there are some optional features or maybe there are some substitutes for those uh, essential features which you have already defined. So these would be used for making dependent claims. I have already explained what are the different type of claims and how do you go about drafting claims. So uh, you can refer to my earlier video on that. I will post a link of that video so that you can always refer back and understand as to what are the steps you need to take care of when you draft claims. 
From the examination point of view, I'll just like to give you one hint that you can pick most of the language from the description of invention that has been given in the question paper. You need not make any language. You can pick words or pick statements from there and use it in all these different parts of uh, the specification as I've already explained. You'll understand more about it as I explain by taking a question that was asked in patent agent examination. So this is a question that came in the question paper of 2018. So this is uh, this is paper 2 and there is a part C in uh, that. Part C1 I have already taken up in my previous video and this is part C2 again a compulsory question which requires you to draft a complete specification with at least two claims and a title. This is a 30 marks question. So there are two options. Question 10 and question 11 are two options relating to different inventions. So I am taking up a uh, question 10. If you want me to take up a uh, question 11 also which relates to noise filters maybe you can post your request in a comment box and i'll be happy to take that up so as you would note the invention relates to an apparatus and method for collecting liquids in printing devices and it, it is used to collect unused ink so what i've done is i've marked the different portions in different colors so as to help you understand as to how you can pick what are the different aspects from the complete specification so if you start reading the specification or the description that has been given you'll see that this is what the field of invention is about so as i told you the field of invention indicates the technology area so this briefly states what the invention is relating to. So you can always pick this uh, statement directly from here and put it in the field of invention. So that's what the patent office wants to see whether you whether your understanding of different aspects or different portions of the complete specification is clear or not. The title you can always pick from the field of invention because it is indicating what is the field of the invention and invariably it also talks about what the invention actually relates to. So the, your title could be a liquid collection apparatus and method or used in printing devices to collect unused so as you continue to read you can see there is some description about what is the existing technology so here is the background of the invention where you can uh, read the description and see what is the existing state of the art in the related field so here i've already underlined what is the state of the art that is available and what are the problems so if you see they have also indicated what are the problems so now if you recollect i've told you that background of invention you talk about what is the existing state of the art and what are the problems that exist in that state of the art. So you can take all these statements and directly put it under the background of the invention. So then if you go further down, you will notice that the description talks about what the invention is actually. So I have marked it in a different color. So from here, the description of invention starts. So it explains what the invention is all about. And you will notice that it uh, mentions that there is a liquid collection apparatus and describes using comprising what are the different features of it. So I have just marked these different features of that liquid collection apparatus by 1, 2, 3 and 4. So where this would be useful would be when you are drafting those claims. So one thing while drafting claims you need to take care of is you need to identify what are the essential features. So all these features are essential because that helps the invention to work in, in the desired manner. So all these four features that I have marked would be the essential features of this apparatus. Then there is another essential feature which says that this is to be employed in an inkjet printhead. So this is for collecting ink. So obviously this would be used in an inkjet printhead. So this is also another essential feature. So in the claim you will have to mention that this liquid collection apparatus is being used for an inkjet printhead and then you would note that there are there is some additional information that is provided so it says that the pores that are there in the liquid absorption means as a diameter of one micron or less or and then it further qualifies it to say that the diameter could be in the range of 0.0 to 1 micron so all these are further elaborations of the different features that have been defined so all these can be used to frame the dependent claims then there are some statements starting with alternatively so these are optional features that may be there so it, it also says that alternatively the liquid absorption means may be formed from a variety of narrow capillaries so all these are optional features as i said you can always use them to make the dependent claims so in a way what you will have to do is you will have to read the description and then identify for yourself as to what you identify as the essential features without which the invention cannot work and then accordingly decide what features would be there in the independent claim and what features would you like to bring in the dependent claim. So that is all based on your understanding. There is no wrong or right rule per se but uh, it's always better to take care of all these aspects when you are drafting a claim. 
so then down below you can see there is also a, a description for a method of uh, collecting liquid so this can be another independent claim because I had, I had shown to you that the invention relates to an apparatus and a method so you can have an independent claim for a method and an independent claim for an apparatus so these are the different options that you can explore if you would note the description also defines the steps for the method so you can use this for your independent method claim and if you further read on you will see that there is a description a brief description of the drawings also given so figure one shows a schematic diagram of a liquid collection apparatus according to the present invention so you can directly use this statement as the brief description of drawing in your complete specification so this is how you derive all uh, different parts from the description that has been given and if you read on further you will see that the following statements define how the invention works so that is the working of the invention so you, what you can do is when you are drafting your complete specification you can copy the entire thing maybe you can put it in your own words or maybe if you don't have enough time you can copy the entire statement as it is and put it across as detailed description of the invention so this is the figure of the invention you need not redraw the figure as is already mentioned in the question paper you can just refer to it wherever required in the de uh, detailed description so now let me show to you what each part of the complete specification with specific reference to this question would look like so coming to the title of the invention as i had already told you so if you can see the hint i have only used that as the title of the invention so i have said that the title is a liquid collection device and apparatus for collecting unused ink in printing devices so this is how i framed it using that particular statement then coming to the field of invention as i had said it relates to what is the technology area so i have just copied the entire statement which I have marked as the field of invention. This is what I have copied in the field of invention. Coming to the background of the invention, as I have already told you, you can just copy from here till here and use it to show what is the state of the art already available and what is the problem in, in, in the state of the art that is already existing. As I said, you can copy the entire statement as it is. Ideally, if you have time, you should try and frame it in your own statement. But if there is no time available, what you can do is you can directly copy all these statements and put it in the background of the invention. Coming to the brief description of the drawings, I had already shown to you that there is a statement which gives you an idea about the brief description of what figure one relates to so there's only one figure so now you can all uh, copy this entire statement and use it for making the brief description of the drawings so coming next to what do you mention in the detailed description of drawings so there is a description about what the invention relates to so it starts somewhere here and you can start copying it from here and go till the end where the invention is disclosed so the entire paragraphs or statements relate to the invention uh, the description of invention and you can use it to make the detailed description of your invention as as is required so coming now to how do you draft the claims that is the most important part so though the question requires you to draft only two claims what i'll what i'll be showing to you is around five to six claims so that you can pick and choose whatever you want to you can have two independent claims or a combination of an independent claim and dependent claims maybe you can draft three claims as as much as time is available to you in the question paper so now uh, coming to the first independent claim what i had already told you that the invention relates to a liquid collection apparatus so what i've done is i've made an independent claim for a liquid collection apparatus so this is just directly copied from uh, the description it talks about a liquid collection apparatus and uh, that's what i have done uh, as i mentioned to you the liquid collection apparatus is installed in an inkjet print head so the, the, this is an essential feature because otherwise it doesn't make sense to have this liquid collection apparatus without any reference to the inkjet print head from where it has to collect that ink so that's what i have mentioned here in the uh, preamble of the claim then comes the transitional linking element which is comprising so also in the description there is a comprising so you can take direct hint from here that that is where you begin the claim body then there are different aspects different features of the liquid collection apparatus so this is directly copied from all the features that i've marked one two three and four from uh, the description so this is uh, feature one this is two this is three and this is the fourth feature so if you read through you'll see that what i've done is i just copied the entire statement that is there describing all these features in the description 
So I have made my independent claim. Now I can make a dependent claims on their independent claim or I can make a separate independent claim. So as I told you, there is a method also in the description. So you can make an independent claim pertaining to the method. So this is what I have again copied from the description. There is a method of collecting liquid which comprises these are the steps. So this is directly copied from from here. So this is where it is copied from. The method is de defined and the de steps that are carried out uh, in the method are defined after comprising. Then these are the dependent claims. These are again optional for you. You can you only had to draft two claims. You can add another set of dependent claims if you have time. So what I've done in the dependent claims is I have further defined what are the features there that are already there in the independent claim for the apparatus. So I've just copied these different aspects from the description. If you remember, I'd shown to you how there was a description about the pores having a particular diameter. So what I've done is I've made two claims for that. These are the two claims that talk about what could be the diameters for, for the liquid absorption means. Then uh, there, there is an alternative embodiment where it has been described that the liquid absorption means could be a plurality of narrow capillaries. So this is what claim 5 talks about. This is an alternate that you have defined and in a dependent claim. Then I have made a dependent claim for the material that is used for the liquid absorption means. So again, this is copied from the description where this is provided that there are different materials that could be used for making the liquid absorption means. So this is all about drafting a complete specification with specific reference to the patent agent examination. So if you have liked the video, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel so that you get regular updates about whatever videos I upload regarding preparations for the patent agent examination. Also, if you if you have any questions please drop them in the uh, in the comments box so that i can answer those